So inshallah this is the 82nd part of our seerah Khatim al Nabeen sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and alhamdulillah last week we talked about uh, some of the remaining events uh, of the third year of Hijri uh, after Hijrah so we talked about how um, for example Hassan radiallahu an was born in that year he was born in that year uh, we talked about how the banning of alcohol came and we know that it wasn't just one ayah that came down at one time it came down in sessions and we talked about how for example Aisha anha, the statement famous statement in Sahih Bukhari where she said that if someone uh, with if someone was to hear, hear the ayat in the beginning if the ayat were in the beginning were to say na la tazni, uh, la tazinu, do not do zina or wala tashribul khamar, do not drink khamar, don't drink alcohol, the people would have said, we will surely not stop drinking alcohol, we will, stop, we will not stop doing zina. Meaning because their iman was weak. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did the tarbiyah of the sahaba by sending down ayat uh, and surah that was talking about iman, building their iman. And this gives us a huge lesson where the tarbiyah of the awlad, of our kids, and also of new Muslims. So when a new Muslim, when someone says the shahada, uh, you don't go to him and start giving him a list of halal and haram and say, here, you know, this is it and, and you're not allowed to do this and you're not going you know, to go to hell. You know, you don't really say this. You give them tarbiyah, you slowly bring them into that kind of stuff. The first thing, uh, and even to bring a person into Islam, the first thing you have to do is you teach them the tenets of Islam, teach them about iman. When you build that iman, that's what gets them to become Muslim, then after that they can learn the halal and haram and they can go into that inshallah. Same thing with the tarbiyah of the awlad. Uh, when they're small, we see like for example in Sunday school, in Islamic school, in the maktab programs at the masjid, uh, we don't, you don't start off with telling the kids that this is haram, this is haram, you're not allowed to do this, this is not allowed to do this. But when the first kids start going to Sunday school, you start off with the basic iman, basic imaniyat, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala owns everything we have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who uh, is going to judge you and bring you into Jannah or take you into Jahannam by His decision. So we start off with that, building the iman of the children. And then when they're old enough, when they're baligh, for example, that's when halal and haram start. Right? The salah, for example, we give them tarbiyah, we tell them at seven years old that you start, you should come pray with us teach them how to pray. And when they're 10 years old, that's when you start uh, being strict and saying, okay, now you have to pray. And when, it, when they become baligh, then it's, it's fard on them. Okay, so you say in the same way, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us in the Quran, and one of the pure examples is the banning of alcohol. It came down in three different stages, and that's, we should try to implement that, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, also, we talked about the sariya of Abu Salama radiallahu anhu where Tulayha ibn Khuwailid and his brother, they were planning to attack the Muslims. And uh, the Prophet ﷺ sent Abu Salama Radharan to go and attack them uh, with 150 soldiers. And uh, before they even got there, when, they, when the enemy heard of the Muslims coming, they got fearful, they got afraid, and they dispersed. They, they didn't even dare attack the Muslims. And we also talked about the famous story of Tulayha. Uh, um, he was one of the Tabi'een where he became Muslim, you, you guys probably remember that, he became Muslim uh, during the time of the Prophet ﷺ. After the Prophet ﷺ passed away, he became Murtad, he left Islam. Not only that, he started claiming to be a Prophet. Okay, Tulayha started to claim to be a Prophet. He fought in wars against the Sahaba. For example, Abu Bakr when he was Khalifa, he sent Khalid ibn Walid and they went and he killed many Muslims, killed many Muslims. And Khalid ibn Walid was sent to go and attack them and kill them. And he ran away to Sham. He ran away to the north, to the Christian territories. Uh, and then we talked about how he became Muslim in one of the battles. And he came and he did Tawbah. And he was actually martyred in, um, in one of the famous uh, Nahrawan. Uh, he was, uh, he was um, martyred in that battle. He was a shaheed in that battle. Allah accept. 
So we see that uh, no matter how far a person falls from the, the tree of Islam and how much sins they do and whatever they do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can accept the tawbah and give the tawfiq of that same person to become a shaheed. Uh, we talked about the sari of Abdullah ibn Unais radiallahu an, where uh, Khalid ibn Sufyan of Banu, Banu Lihyan from the Hudayl tribe, uh, they were planning to attack the Muslims. The Prophet sent Abdullah ibn Unais radiallahu an to go and kill uh, the leader. So he went and we talked about how he went there and he was the one who, uh, when he was while, while he's walking, it was Asr time and he didn't want to miss the prayer. So he was walking and praying the namaz Salat al-Asr while he was walking towards this man, right, about to kill him. And then we talked about how he killed him and he, he came back to the Prophet Sallallahu and the Prophet Sallallahu gifted him with something. Anybody remember what did he gift him with? So he gave him a staff as a gift and he said that this is a sign, this is a symbol between you and I on the Day of Judgment. Meaning that this will be for you and on the Day of Judgment you will come with the staff. And there's very few people who will be leaning on a staff on that day. And we know that Abdullah he, uh, he took his sword and he attached his, that staff to his sword and he kept it with him wherever he would be. And then he was buried with that. That staff was buried with him in the grave. So, um, uh, that was, uh, I'm sorry, Abdullah bin Unais, yes. Okay, so that was the beginning of the fourth Hijri. Okay, beginning of the fourth Hijri. Uh, there was another very um, tragic event that occurred in the month of Safar. So we have Muharram is the first month. These are the ones we talked about already, these two um, Sariyas that happened in Muharram and the next month, the second month of Hijri. Okay, so this is not like a year passed, six months passed, the Muslims were in peace. Every moment they were always, uh, you know, anxious because there's something about, someone's planning to attack. There's something going on. For well, the next month, the month of Safar, uh, this is Banu Lihyan, the same ones who, their, one of their leaders, Khalid ibn Sufyan, was killed by Abdullah ibn Unais. So that same tribe, they wanted, they were seeking revenge from the Muslims. Okay, so they were seeking revenge, and what they did is they went to Adal and uh, Qara. They went to these two tribes, and they convinced them. They said, "Why don't you go to the Prophet Sallallahu If we go, there's some suspicion there, so you know we don't want to do. It. We'll stay in the background. You guys go and ask the Prophet Sallallahu to send some some uh, Sahaba that can teach them Islam." Okay, so Adal and Qara tribes. Okay, so they went to the Prophet Sallallahu and he said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna fina islaman fabaath ma'ana nafaran min ashabik to so send some of your sahaba with us and because some of people have become Muslim in our tribe, so send your sahaba to us. Yufaqihunana fiddin wa yukriunana al Quran wa yuallimunana sharay al Islam. They'll come and they'll teach us Quran, they'll teach us the fiqh, they'll teach us the tenets of Islam and teach us about Islam and uh, you know basically we'll we'll learn from them. So the Prophet ﷺ, and one thing I just want as a side note, this is again a proof against those who claim that the Prophet ﷺ is also words Hadir and Nadir, right? That he knows the ghaib and he has ilm al ghaib. Whatever Allah SWT gave of him of ilm al ghaib, that's yes, the Prophet ﷺ knew that. But the Prophet ﷺ did not have uh, ilm al ghaib. He did not know what's in the unseen. And if he did, this is a proof right here. Why would he send? 10 Sahaba to go get, and get slaughtered. And that's what we're going to talk about now. I just kind of told you what happens. But, but basically, he wouldn't send the Sahaba to do this. So this is one of the signs right here, or one of the proofs you could say against that. Uh, so the, the Prophet ﷺ sent 10 Sahaba led by Asim ibn Thabit al Ansari. Okay, Thabit, uh, Asim ibn Thabit, he was sent as the head, uh, the Amir of these 10 Sahaba. Again, to go and teach these people of this tribe about Islam. Now, when they got to a place called Raji', and that's why it's called Ba'thul Raji', it's called the name of this incident, Ba'thul Raji', the sending of the Raji' or sending to Raji', and Raji' was a place between Makkah and Asfan. So you have Asfan; it's one on the way when you're coming from Medina Munawwar south to Makkah. It's on the way. 
you'll see a sign called Asfan or Asfan. And uh, Mecca, so between Asfan and Mecca, there was this place called Raji'ah. And uh, they alerted, they sent some people and they went and alerted Banu Lihyan who were in the area. They were, they were basically ready, waiting for the information. And they set out with 200 warriors. So they had 200 warriors ready to attack these Muslims to get their revenge. Now they came and they surrounded the Muslims. Okay, 200 warriors from Banu Lihyan, they came and they surrounded the Muslims. Basically, they, they did, this is treachery, right? They lied to the Prophet ﷺ. They got 10 Sahaba to come with them. And then they alerted the enemy and they said, come and attack. You're, they're, basically, your you're prey, they're ready here. Just come and attack them. So they came and they surrounded the Muslims. Uh, the Muslims, these 10 Sahaba, went up to a high hill. They climbed upon the hill. And uh, when they were surrounded, uh, basically, the kuffar, they promised them, they said to him that لَكُمْ uh, mithaq. We promise you that we will not harm you. Meaning they basically will give you safe passage, just come down in nazaltum ilayna. If you come back, come down to us, we'll give you safe passage. We're not going to harm you, we're not going to do anything to you. Uh, uh, that we won't kill any of you. Okay, they gave him this promise. And Asim, uh, the head of, these, of this contingent, okay, he says that I refuse, I refuse to give uh, to go into uh, take the ahad or take the promise of a, of a kafir, meaning I don't trust these people. I don't trust that they're gonna just give let us live like this. They're gonna do something to us, so I don't trust them. And what he did was he um, he says, "Amma ana fala unzilu fi dhimmati kafir." I will not, I will not go into the dhimma or the protection under the protection of a kafir. I don't trust them. And he said, uh, so he says, "Allahumma akbar anna nabiyak sallallahu alaihi wasallam." So he makes a dua. He says, "Oh Allah." Give our news, tell the Prophet ﷺ what happened to us. Give him the khabar, tell him what happened to us. And he, along with six of the other Sahaba, so seven, they fought to their death. The, all ten of them were fighting, but seven of them fought to their death. They were killed right then, uh, after, uh, while fighting, they were killed. They were given shahada. And uh, the Prophet ﷺ, it's nearly that he was in Medina Manora, and he told the Sahaba what is going on hundreds of miles away. So he was, this is Wahi, he was informing the Sahaba of what is, I mean, this is a dua that Asim Radhalan had made, that oh Allah, tell the Prophet what has happened to us and what they're doing to us. So the Prophet had told, told um, has uh, informed the Sahaba. Now, Hudayl, they had intended to take the head of Asim ibn Thabit Radhalan uh, to a woman named Salafa bint Sa'ad ibn, uh, ibn Shaheed. Okay? So Salafa was a kafira, okay? And she had lost two of her sons in the battle of Uhud. In the battle of Uhud, she had lost two of her sons. And she made an oath. So Asim had killed two of her sons in the battle of Uhud. So she made a vow that she will drink wine. She will drink wine from the skull of Asim ibn Thabit. When she, uh, she gets her hands on Asim, she will take his head and she will make a wine glass out of it and she will drink wine. She made this oath to do that. Okay? So now Hudayl, uh, they want to go close to the body, they want to take the body of Asim. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a um, uh, karama. Okay? Mu'ajiza is something that happens uh, a miracle that happens to the prophets and then karamat are happened to the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa those who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so uh, when they came close to his body to take his body a swarm of wasp or bees came and they surrounded the body they were basically flying around his body they weren't able to get near they got scared and they got back and what they did was they said basically let's wait until the evening when these bees or these wasps go back to their hives then we'll go and take the body so they waited until the evening, oh, I mean this is something that happened, but they waited until the evening and when they were about to go forth to get the body, a water, a gush of water, a stream or you could say even like a river came out of nowhere. There's no clouds, there's no raining, there's nothing and it just rained, water, basically not rain, but water came out of nowhere and t took the body of Asim Radhan and went away. Basically took it away and Allah... Allah knows best where his grave is. We don't even know where his grave is. Not even the Sahaba know where the graves, grave went. But they took, uh, the water took the body and went away. So they weren't able to uh, get to the, to the body. And Umar 
who was the son-in-law of Asim ibn Thabit. So Asim Radhulan was the father-in-law of Umar Radhulan when he when Umar Radhulan married uh, one of the Ansari women uh, that was the fa- the daughter of Asim Radhulan. When he heard what had happened, uh, he said he remarked. He said, "Yahfad al al Abd al Mu'min." Allah Subhanahu wa Taala protects protects the the the. Um, Believing slave. Kana Asim Nathara Allah Yamusahu Mushrik Wala Yamusa Mushrikan Abada. Meaning that he had made a vow that, that oh Allah protect my body. Don't let them touch my body. If I die, I'm a shaheed. Every every sahaba would ask they would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for shahada. But he said that don't let them mutilate my body, don't let them get to my body. So he made this made this dua he would make this dua when he was alive. فَمَنَعَ اللَّهُ بَعْدَ وَفَاتِهِ كَمَا امْتَنَعَ مِنْهُ فِي حَيَاتِهِ So Umar Radhan is basically saying that Allah has protected his body after his death uh, because of this dua. Now going, I'm sorry, Asim ibn Thabit Okay, so he was the father-in-law of Umar ibn Khattab Now uh, one of the other sahaba out of those ten, so we have seven of, seven of the ten sahaba were shaheed. Okay, three left. You have uh, Abdullah bin Tariq, you have J- Zayd ibn Dathinna, and you have Khubayb. Uh, and so these three Sahaba were the ones who were left. Uh, Abdullah ibn Tariq, uh, so uh, basically what happened is uh, the three that were left, uh, they were still alive, and they were um, basically they, there was a pause in the fighting. And then they said to them again that if you give up, if you just surrender, we won't kill you. So what they did is these three Sahaba. They decided, they said, okay, let's give up and let's, you know, basically surrender our weapons. So they surrendered and um, it's mentioned that when they surrendered, as soon as they surrendered and they came down from the, from the hill, the, the kuffar took uh, like a string or, or uh, rope and they started tying them up. So, excuse me, right then, Abdullah ibn Tariq, he says, this is the first of their, this is the first of their treachery that they have done. And I don't trust them. He changed his mind. And he said, basically, I'm not going to allow them to take me. He started refusing to go with them. So, you know, they would make them walk. They say, walk with us. He wouldn't walk. He'd just sit down and put his weight on the ground. They would have to pick him up. They would do it. And he wouldn't move. So they decided to kill him on the spot. And they killed him. He was shaheed right there on the spot. Um, uh, now, you have the other two left. Is Zayd ibn Dathinna Radharan. And you have Khubayb Radharan. And these two were tied up. And they were basically taken uh, by a person by Zuhair al-Hudhali. al-Hudhali. So from Banu Hudayl, uh, Zuhair, he was one of the people from that tribe. And he basically took them to Makkah to sell them to the highest bidder. And again, this is after the Battle of Uhud, Battle of Badr. And the, the Makkans, the Quraysh, the Mushrikeen want revenge, right? So they, the Banu Hudayl knew that they can get, make money off them. So they basically took them as slaves and they said, we're going to go and sell them to the highest bidder in Mecca. Now, Safwan ibn Umayyah, he purchased Zayd ibn Dathinna to avenge his father. What was the name of his father? Oh, I just said it. Uh, Umayyah, okay. So Umayyah was the father of Safwan ibn Umayyah. Okay, and Umayyah was... Sorry? Umayyah ibn Khalf. Umayyah ibn Khalf, yeah. Okay, so Umayyah ibn Khalf or Khalaf, uh, he was the father of Safwan. And uh, Sufan becomes Muslim, and later on he becomes Muslim. Uh, but at this point he was not Muslim. He wanted to revenge his father's death. Uh, so he basically, uh, uh, what's it called? He purchases Zayd ibn Dathinna. So he purchases him. And uh, uh, the other Sahabi, Khubayb, killed uh, Harith ibn Amir. So Harith ibn Amir, he was one of the Mushrikeen. And he was killed in the Battle of Badr. Okay, and he was from the Banu Nawfal tribe. He was killed in the Battle of Badr by Khubayb. So the tribe wanted revenge, so they purchased Khubayb. They purchased Khubayb so that they can torture and they can kill him. Now, Zayd ibn Dathinna, uh, Safwan did not wait. He wanted to kill him quick. He wanted to avenge his father quickly. So he basically, uh, soon after arriving in Mecca, he had him killed. And... Um, one thing about Zayd ibn the Thinna Radhan before he was killed, before he was Shaheed, Abu Sufyan, so they tied him up basically and they were beating him, they were you know, torturing him and, and stuff and Abu Sufyan came and he says to him, Ya Zayd, I ask you Zayd by Allah, 
He says, أَتُحِبُّ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عِنْدَنَا الْآن فِي مَكَانِكَ نَضْرِبُ عُنَقَ وَأَنَّكَ فِي أَهْلِكَ Do you wish that, that the Prophet ﷺ was here in your spot? That, you know, he's getting beaten, he's getting tortured and everything, and he knows he's about to get killed. So he says that, would you wish that the Prophet ﷺ was in your spot right now? And we would kill him instead of you? Would you want this? And you're, you're safe and sound with your family. You're sitting in your ahl, sitting with your family safe and sound. So Zayd al responded, he said, Wallahi, I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ma uhibbu anna Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-an fi makani alladhi huwa fi tusibuhu shawkatun tu'zi. He says, I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I don't even want a, um, a, a, a thorn. That I don't even want the Prophet to be where he is right now and a thorn to prick him. That uh, that I would not even want to be in my fa- with my family. Even a small thorn would prick the Prophet and I wouldn't want that to happen. So he responded in this way. And Abu Sufyan, again, he was not Muslim at this time. He was amazed by this. And he remarked the famous, uh, say, famous saying that Abu Sufyan said, he said, مَا رَأَيْتُ مِنَ النَّاسِ أَحَدًا يُحِبُّ أَحَدًا كُحُبِّ أَصْحَابِ مُحَمَّدٍ مُحَمَّدًا صلى الله عليه وسلم. He said that I have never seen, I have never seen anyone from the people, from the humans or from anyone. I have never seen anyone. They love anyone else like the Sahaba of the Prophet love Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. That this is just, it's on another level. It's on another level. Like, like how could they love him so much? He was amazed to see this. And uh, so Zayd Radhran was killed by Nastas, uh, who later actually became Muslim. So he killed Zayd Radhran at that moment. And then that Nastas Radhran, he be, uh, Rahimullah, I'm not sure if he became Muslim at the time of the Prophet or not, but he became Muslim later on. 